What's up, YouTube? It's Mark here from Next Level Tech and Android TV Tips, and I was tasked to help my girlfriend find a Chromebook for her kid. Now, I've never really used a Chromebook before. I've always gone with laptops and desktops, and obviously um, cell phones. So, looking at Chromebooks was definitely an eye opener. Uh, taking a look at a lot of specs and trying to figure out what is the best bang for your buck when it comes to value when they are already meant to be a value device. Um, so what I have here today is the Asus Chromebook Flip C434. Uh, this is a two-in-one Chromebook 14-inch uh, HD touch screen nano edge display, Intel Core M3 processor running at 3.4 gigahertz. This was one of the uh, better ones in 2019. However, in 2019, we were looking at prices close to $700. Now that it's the end of 2020 and Christmas uh, sales are on right now, you can find this for about 500 US, maybe even cheaper if you shop around. So this makes it one of the better buys when you're looking for Chromebooks for this holiday season. We're gonna get it unboxed and we're gonna take a look at it. So let's get started. Reading the specs off the back here, it's got this, the Intel M3 81000Y. It's got four gigs of DDR3 RAM, Wi-Fi 5, um, dual band, USB 3.1, and two USB-Cs, which is really good to see in a Chromebook. Yeah, so let's get it unboxed. So this is the first Chromebook that I'm really unboxing. Um, even for my, myself, um, you can see it looks just like a laptop unboxing. When you take it out of the package, I mean, it's very, it's very sleek. So I'll just take this out right here. It's very nice. Uh, this weighs about three pounds, so it's not going to be overly heavy. Chromebooks are one of the best ways if your kids are looking for that touchscreen display or anyone's looking for that touchscreen display at a value, right? So, I mean... This does have a very premium look to it. It's got a very nice metallic um, material. Everything's outlined or edged in a very glossy metal finish, the Asus logo, as well as the 360 degree hinges. Uh, you can see the Chrome OS logo at the top there. And on the bottom, it just has your rubber feet and your dual firing speakers, your left and right. All right, let's see what it looks like. Actually, that looks pretty good. It looks like a very premium product. The keys feel very nice. Let's see what else we get in the box before we go too far in depth with the actual product. I don't want to get too, uh, too far ahead of myself and excited about the actual Chromebook itself. So in the box, once we get this out, we can just pop this open like this. Let's just put this here for now. So in the box, we get our typical warranty information. This is the search for incredible or in search for incredible. And that's on that side. And then on the right hand side should be all of your cables, which is just your power. So I'm going to move the box to the side so that we can actually get a better look at everything here. So this is your charging brick, your power supply, which is actually pretty compact and pretty convenient compared to a lot of the power bricks that come with an actual full-fledged laptop. And I believe it's a 45 watt. Yeah, this is a 45 watt uh, charging brick. So this should have pretty good charging times. I'm not exactly sure what the charging times are right off the top of my head, but I will put it up on the screen in a moment. So let's move this to the side. Okay. So here's the Chromebook. Let's get this opened and see what it looks like. All right, so it has the keyboard protector that I'm gonna to move to the side. I'm going to hold this up so you guys can see. 
has a very, very premium. You guys can see my camera and everything there. <laughs> has a very premium feel to it. The screen looks nice. So let's close this for a second. So just to give you guys a better look at all the ports. This USB-C is for your charging. You can see the charging port indicator there, which lights up orange. Uh, here's another USB-A 3.1 headphone jack, the volume rockers, and the power button. And then on the other side is where you're just going to see a USB-C port that you can put in OTGs or uh, whatever you would like into that USB-C port, as well as the, uh, the SD card there. Now, setting the Chromebook down. And you can see as soon as we boot into the actual Chromebook, this is what it looks like. This is the welcome screen. Now, one of the, I guess, benefits of using a Chromebook is the lightweight operating system. The Chrome OS was originally uh, meant to be a browser-based operating system based around Chrome's browser, right? So you don't need a whole lot of power to power this operating system. And over the years, there has been more compatibility when looking at Android applications being able to be installed. Now, if you're looking at installing things like Adobe Premiere Pro um, or full suites of you know Microsoft Office and stuff like that, this may not be the best solution for you or Chromebooks in general. However, most uh, uh, students these days get Microsoft Office Student Edition for free, which they actually access via the web-based um, software, which is fully compatible with Chromebooks. You can also install the Android versions of Microsoft Office and stuff like that. However, that being said, some of the features and, and navigations are still uh, leaves a lot to be desired in regards to development of those applications when being used on a Chromebook. All right, so we are on the ASUS 434 right now. So we've gone through the initial setup process. You've signed into your Gmail account. Uh, if you don't need, have a Google account, um, you will want one when you're using a Chromebook. A lot of it revolves around Google services. Um, you have things like Google, uh, the Play Store, you have Google calendars, um, you have your Gmail, everything kind of syncs together. And the simplicity of it all is that if you ever lose, buy, sell, log out or factory reset your Chromebook, it's as easy as signing back into your account and everything that you have is there. Um, the reason that a lot of these Chromebooks don't have a whole lot of space and they choose to go with things like flash memory is one, because it's faster than the standard um, the standard hard drives, and two, because a lot of it is saved in the cloud or among the Google services. So really quickly, just navigating this. Um, if you want to allow somebody else to access your Chromebook, but you want to keep your privacy, one of the best ways to do that is actually going to your status bar here and clicking sign out. So from here at this screen where you have your login screen, you can browse as a guest. And what this does is it allows somebody access to the Chromebook, but only to the browser. You're not assigned into any accounts. Um, if you minimize this window, you can see there's no apps here. There's nothing they can really do. Um, it's really if they just want to use it as a, a web browsing terminal, they can use it that way. So if you have a younger brother, younger sister, you know, a kid, whatever, and you just want them to, you know, access things like YouTube, then they can just use it for YouTube and not get access to any of your emails or anything that might be confidential or private to you. All right, so that's one way of using the Chromebook. So let's go back over and sign back in. You can see it doesn't take really long to sign into the Chromebook. It immediately opens up my web browsing tabs as soon as I sign in. I think that's by default. So a couple of things I wanna go over now that we're in the actual Chromebook itself is that anytime you get a Chromebook, um, even if it has a charge and you've taken it out of the box and you hit that power button, it will not turn on. Um, I think it's a, a battery protection feature that these companies are doing with the Chromebooks to ensure that it has a longer battery life. It does need to be plugged in even for a second to just jumpstart that battery. So no, it doesn't matter if it's 100% battery when you receive it in the box, you will need to actually plug in that power for it to initially boot. But once you do, you will have power, you'll be good. You can unplug it if you need to, but um, it is a good idea to fully charge the devices before the initial use. Now, a couple other things here, obviously uh, down to the bottom right, you're gonna have all of your setting controls. So this is where you're gonna be able to connect to things like your Wi-Fi network. Um, toggle on and off your Bluetooth, your notifications. You have your volume slider here. You also have your brightness here. So if you want to adjust your brightness, you can. Um, 
your date is in the bottom left. Your battery is here and it tells you how much longer until it's fully charged. Your power to turn it off and on if you choose to. You also have your lock. So if you want to lock this instead of signing out, you can. And then you can access your settings from here. Now, the settings can be a little bit confusing when it comes to Chrome OS. A lot of it can be found just by using the search feature that's built directly into it. But if you know what you're looking for, generally you can use this, but I find that the search option here will pull up things a lot quicker than you know you trying to guess what the keywords are. So a couple of things initially off the bat, you have your network. So this is where you can pick your network, your Bluetooth. So navigating, if you are ever navigating and you need to scroll, it's two fingers to scroll and it's up and down. So two fingers on the touchpad to scroll up and down. Um, and this is where you're going to find that information. Uh, if you go to device displays, you can actually see that I have more than one display connected to this Chromebook. Uh, it's actually being done through an OTG adapter. Now I can't show you because if I turn off the mirror built-in display, it'll automatically show you the secondary display. Um, but once you uncheck the mirrored built-in display, you can move around where you would have your displays based on your actual orientation so that if you put your secondary display to the right on this side, if you went to the right of the screen, you would automatically go over to that screen there. Um, this Chromebook is fantastic when it comes to all the different port selections and running things through USB-C uh, and a dongle um, allows you to add things like a secondary monitor, Ethernet ports, um, and a bunch of other USB ports. So it turns this thing into a real multitasking machine at a budget price. And I've been pretty happy with the multiple displays. Um, I am uh, using this and recording this at 1080p because this is a 1080p display. And you can really see the quality is really good, but I've been pretty impressed. Um, one quick toggle that I wanted to talk about really quickly. If you hit your control alt shift question mark on your actual keyboard here, it pulls up all the keyboard shortcuts that's built into any Chromebook that's using Chrome OS. And this can be pretty handy to know. So I would advise, you know, as you get used to using your Chromebook, pay attention to these because this can really help you maximize your productivity when using this device. So it has things like how to lock the screen faster, um, things like uh, going to the next tab, um, all kinds of great stuff is in here. So, and it has different options for different things, depending on what you're doing. So I would advise taking a look at your keyboard shortcuts and getting to know them. They are your friend. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go jump over to the browser and I'll show you a couple of ways of navigating the browser. So we have the browser up. You can see I already have two uh, pages up. I have Android TV tips up. And you can scroll, just like I said, by going up and down with two fingers on your trackpad. But let's say you wanted to switch easily between the tabs that you have open. You take three fingers and you would just swipe back and forth, left to right. And that's how you'd switch from tab to tab. Now I will say, these are great machines for doing simple tasks, but keep an eye on how many tabs you have open. Um, these machines do not come with a lot of RAM, so keep that in mind when you're using them. Try to actively you know, stay within a certain amount of tabs or close out all your browsers just to maximize the RAM on your actual devices to make sure that they are running at their optimal performance. So talking about optimal performance, um, like I mentioned uh, when we first jumped onto this Chromebook, uh, a lot of the stuff is saved among the Google services or the Google Cloud. So not much is saved actually on the device. So if you ever notice the device start to become a little bit laggy, one of the more common things to fix or this issue with Chromebooks is something called power wash. More people would know this more along the lines as a factory reset. Reset, but it's a little bit different because typically with a factory reset, um, you lose all of your data. But because this is saving all of your data among the Google services, it's going to be there when you sign back into your device. So the way that you would do this is that you would sign out of your Chromebook. So we're going to go over to the bottom right and we're going to click on sign out. And then what we would do, it was we would hold down control, alt, shift, and the letter R. And you're going to see this is reset this Chrome device. A restart is required to begin the power, so power wash process after restart. You will be asked to confirm that you want to proceed. Um, so obviously I'm not going to power wash it now, but it's as simple as that. You would hold down control, 
alt shift and the letter R, and then that's going to automatically start the restart process, which would then reboot into a factory reset. Um, so this is really good if you are, um, you know, noticing the device is becoming a little bit laggy. You don't have to worry about it's going to take a long time to set back up because a lot of this is done in the cloud. Um, it's as simple as just signing back in. It'll take a few minutes and you'll be back uh, to the races as soon as you sign back in once it does that reboot and the factory reset. It doesn't take long at all. So we're going to hit cancel because I'm not doing that right now. And we're going to get back in here. All right. So as you can see here, it does have the Google Play Store. So a lot of the applications that you would use would be in here. Um, you can use things like, um, you know, movies, apps, games, you can find books, depending on what you're looking for. And it will all be compatible through the Google Play Store. There are ways of installing things outside of the Play Store, but I'm not going to get into that today. Um, you would be able to find a lot of that information if you search it online. Um, this does have a couple different modes. Uh, it does have a tablet mode. So if I actually flip this around, you can see this actually touch screen. So if I flip this around, it should go into tablet mode. And obviously it's going all kinds of different directions on me, but this is what tablet mode looks like. And I actually kind of like it. So, I mean, a lot of times I find myself using my Amazon um, tablet, my fire tablet in bed, cause I don't want to have the TV on. Um, and this is actually a 14 inch tablet. It's smooth, it's fluid. I'm able to open and close things just, just like I would. So um, this is actually really neat. A lot of it is done through gestures. So if I go back in there, you can see at the bottom here where that little bar is. If I swipe up, it goes home. I can also uh, see recents if I hold it down and then close off things that I want. I don't want running in the background. Um, overall, the amount of stuff that you get from uh, this device at this budget, I think it's really impressive. So kind of my quick conclusion, um, after using a Chromebook for the first time ever, unboxing it, I'm really doing my research, trying to figure out what the best buy, best bang for my buck is when it comes to a Chromebook. And picking this one, I've been pretty damn impressed, I have to say. Um, this Chromebook has come with good quality uh, build constructions, um, talking about, you know, your metallic design, your 360 hinges, um, 14 inch dis uh, display um, that bends all the way back. It turns into a touchscreen tablet that's 14 inches. Impressive, been able to run um, OTG dongles through the USB-C ports, connect things like external monitors, um, have multiple monitors connected. I haven't tried more than the one, but if we're including the actual Chromebook itself and the secondary uh, monitor that I've connected, that's two displays that I've been running. Um, I've been pretty happy with everything that I've been able to do. Um, you have native support of, um, of printers, um, USB drives, um, external accessories, things like mice, keyboards. Um, I've, all, I've also hooked up uh, mini USB keyboards to this. Uh, so if you want to, you know, set it up in uh, tablet mode and have it set up. And, you know, if you're laying in bed and watching YouTube or Netflix or whatever you're watching, you can access it using either your touchscreen or use a mini Bluetooth remote um, and be able to access everything on the device. Uh, the device is pretty snappy. The screen is actually really nice at, um, you know, 1080p. Uh, so all in all, I think this has been a great buy and I'm pretty happy that I picked this one. Um, there is a lot more that you can do with Chromebooks. This is just my basic um, unboxing and my review. I hope that you guys really enjoy this and I, I have a lot more videos coming in the future. So make sure you hit that like, that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace. Hey everybody, uh, just before we get going, I wanted to say a huge thank you, much love and appreciation to everyone who supports what I do over here on Next Level Tech. Make sure you hit that like and that subscribe button and share these videos with a family member and friend.